It's the sad conclusion of Ajax Assembled. It's not that sad. We've secured the league. Bit of a spoiler for the episode, but we have. We've already done it. We've got two more games to celebrate this great squad and um, go through a few of the players. So join me for this one. It's going to be our last one for this season. And I need your help to choose the important next steps of this channel. Who are we going to be next? We're going to talk about that in this episode. Stay with me because your voice is going to matter. Hello ladies and gentlemen, it is Frank. Welcome back to IX Assembled for the final time. Loving it. Um, I'm sorry about the slight delay of the final of the episode. It was just um, a bit hard to like um, just get around to really. I've had so much going on. We've even put up our Christmas decorations already, which is absolutely unbelievable. I know it's very early. Recording in this on November 19th, just so you know. So they've gone up very early. <laughs> We'll go through the goals now. Um, of just only two games since you last left, uh, Pedro had a lovely free kick against Twente, and um, Sheldarup managed to. Oh, oh, sorry, they pull one back, of course, from a corner, and Sheldarup very late on, 80th minute or so, uh, managed to get the win for us. Eber was playing in this game as well, which was great. Pedro headed to the back stick, and Sheldarup just beat his man at the far post, tapped in for a 2 1 win. But yeah, I've been doing well. I hope you've all been doing well. Thank you for all the continued support. We're up to. I mean, over the space of a month, probably got the most views I've ever had on my channel. So I'm very, very thankful. So thank you very much. This is how we won the league. A fantastic performance away at Feyenoord. Um, and yeah, it started off fantastically. Pedro, some cracking work and Brobby scored. I think that's his 25th goal of the season or near enough anyway. He's absolutely scoring bundles now. Um, just after half time, like 10 minutes into the second half, he made it to. Sheldrick took it down, spun on it and then just... Buried it into the bottom right-hand corner. But then final stage, a very quick comeback, which I was thinking, oh, we're not going to win it then, are we? We're going to have to wait for the next <laughs> episode on camera to try and wrap this up. But no, not to be. We did manage to have a, our own way. After their um, comeback, um, Ocon, as uh, Speed says, um, scored there, made it 2 all. But Justin be like, I don't know what he was doing. But João Pedro volleyed home for about 30 yards into an empty net, and that was enough to wrap us up the title, so that's good. We've got two games today, Go Ahead Eagles and Fortuna Sittard, and then we're just going to talk a little bit about the team and just a few of the players. Um, it's a really nice culmination, but then we're going to talk Sankipur. As soon as these games are done, we're going to talk about what we want to do next and what type of save. So we'll be going into it. We'll play this game. We'll go with the team. We'll just have a little chat. Um, I know the proper game is out now. Obviously, this did start as a beta save, and now we've gone into... Um, well, we've gone into the real game now. I haven't started the save since. I haven't even played one personally as of yet. This is literally the only save I've done. Whether I continue this on off camera, I don't think I will. Um, I'm, I'm generally like what I'm playing at the moment, um, and I, I'm tr I think I'm going to get a, an Elgato for Christmas. Actually, um, it's just the only thing I've basically asked for. I, I don't need anything anymore. I've moved out. Um, my parents always still want to buy me stuff. I mean, I'm far too old for them to buy me presents, but um, it's nice of them. They always want to try and give me something. They're going to pick up the old guy for me. It's pretty much the only thing I want. Um, and yeah, very lucky to be able to get stuff like that. But that will allow me to bring so much more to you people on YouTube. And um, it's what I want to do as well. But I've been playing FIFA. Um, I downloaded the Warzone today. I started playing that. I uh, don't expect any content from Warzone. I am useless. FIFA's a possibility though, and it's a game I spend a lot of my time on actually. I've probably played more FIFA than I do Football Manager, although I just love anything to do with football really. But yeah, lots of stuff coming up, and um, obviously FM is saying I want to really do well. And um, oh, lovely goal from Jao Pedro, 14th of the season, great cross from uh, Shell Roof as well. Um, but yeah, the next save, it's an important decision. I do need your help with it because I don't know what to do. Um, my, my criteria are. So if you're listening and you want to help me with the save, criteria are lower league, 100%. It's going to have to be, I want a longer term one. Um, I don't mind doing unemployed to whatever. I don't know what, to, I mean, I think uh, Workspace does that, Parks Prem, doesn't he? I mean, everyone type typically does something like that, but I don't know whether unemployed is the way I want to go. I, I don't mind choosing first. Um, European, I think preferably, just because that's what I'm comfortable with. I'm not really a massive I wouldn't even say I'm fantastic outside of Europe because I've only done a few saves like South America and um, 
never done Oceania or Asia, really. I mean, other than that, I don't know. But maybe it's worth me spreading my wings. But maybe not for a, my first full term save of FM23. Maybe later down the line, we can start like a journeyman or something where we go everywhere. But I don't know. Um, I'm open to it. So lower league. Europe probably, and I'm open for any suggestions. If there's any club you particularly want to see or want me to look at, I will do so. Um, I have a few ideas in my mind, and I'll probably swing them by you later in the video, but still literally putting them together. Or go ahead and nearly score there. Obviously, the result doesn't matter too much, but it looks like we're playing okay. Um, they're probably getting a few more shots than I'd be comfortable with them having, but at the end of the day, that we've got this style wrapped up. It's all good from here. I just want to see us get a couple of wins and um, we'll go through the squad and just talk about where I think could have been improved. And obviously, we're still hurting from that Champions League loss and I am as well. And I assume you will be as well as viewers who followed it from the start. It sucks a bit, but it is what it is. Do you know? That's one of my favourite sayings. It doesn't matter. I'm sure if we played a couple more seasons on, we'd be right up there because we weren't far away at all. Kudus with his 10th goal of the season, they were an absolute thunderbolt into the top right-hand side. Top left corner, sorry, depending on what perspective you are. I, I think I always say from the players, like if it's the players' side more than the goalkeeper's side, but I don't know if that says something about the person or not. I don't know. Probably say quite psychological there. How do you say it? When someone's shooting on goal, do you look at the goalkeeper's perspective or the striker's perspective? I don't know. Uh, I mean, I always go by a player of my team, I guess. It was like a 2 0 win, though. Clean sheet wrapped up. Um, could be a break here, though. We've got three on two. Kudus is taking the ball forward. Brian Brobby. He scores. That's probably offside, though. If not, he's timed it particularly well. But I think he's slightly off, sadly. Oh, it's awarded. Well, well done. I clearly was wrong. Kudus ran literally from the edge of the D all the way to their box and managed to slip through a ball to Brobby. That looked very tight. I'd be liking to see a tight offside replay there. But we'll see if we get one. I don't think... Oh, we will. Here we go. I'd like to see it because it was absolutely like just... Oh, it's fractional. Because he was making the run before the ball was played. So by the time he got the ball, he looked miles off. But not to be. 3-0. Fantastic result. Go ahead. Easily dispatched. Anyway, for the last time ever, I will join you back for the next game of Fortuna Sitar. And... Um, it's the last one. We're at home and then we're a little chat about the players. We'll do the squad thing. I'll finish that game and we'll get back for the squad thing. So I'll see you in two seconds for Fortuna Sittard. I always like to do things romantically. So here we are. Ibrahimovic, last game of professional football and our last game of Ajax Assembled. Um, I think actually what I'll do is probably just talk about a few of the players while we have them in the game. Um, and just obviously saying to talk through while we play. We'll start with the starting eleven, and then after the game, I'll go back and pick a few people out just for a bit more praise. We'll start with Lunin. Um, Andre Lunin, we bought for 2.5 million in this save, and I think he's been fantastic. I, I, I'm sure you can see by his performances, the long runs we've had in Champions League. And um, obviously, in first starting with Ajax, you do have that issue of obviously your keepers being um, older than just uh, older than the club itself nearly they are ancient um, but there's not too much wrong with that but you do need to look to the future I think Lunin any mid European power like an Ajax or Dortmund or Porto it's, well obviously Porto would be a bad example Diego Costa is an absolute mental animal but you get my point around that level around that level um, like slightly lesser European nations. I think he's the perfect player to pick up and he'll be cheap because he's not going to break into the Real Madrid squad typically because they can just go buy someone. But they've got Courtois. Um, so, or Courtois, sorry. Courtois? I don't know what's wrong with me saying. Um, they've got Courtois who typically is not going to retire for a long old time. And, um, and well, obviously keepers don't get much injured either, do they? So, um, Never usually a problem, but yeah, definitely worth picking up uh, if you're around that level of a player or level of a team, sorry, and you're looking for that type of player. Um, Devin Wrench and Jorin Timber, we'll talk to them as a pair because together, unbelievable. Um, Wrench is fantastic on this game and uh, Jorin Timber, um, one of the best centre-backs genuinely in the world, I think, if you played another two seasons on. His speed, his ability just to tackle on, can pass. He's the perfect ball-playing centre-back. Timber is unbelievable. Uh, we'll skip over a Kanji because don't need to tell you too much about him. He's been a rock since we brought him in, but we've only had him for about 15 games. Been really solid. 
Um, you know what you have with him, Akanji. He's like Ron Seal. He does what he says on the tin. He's a decent player. He can pass. He's pretty good. Calvin Bassey. Love him. Love, love, love Calvin Bassey. I loved him in real life. And um, I think he's cracking. He does need to learn a bit more of the Ajax way in real life. But on the game, he's really easy to mould. I think as a left back, he's just such a physical presence. And um, you've seen some of the goals and the assists he's had, Bassey. It's been unbelievable. Um, Xiao Gomez, um, second season signing, of course. But um, Imperius, so good. I mean, someone I'll be looking at for most of my saves, I think. Because he was cheap from a Flamenco, I think it was. But... Um, yeah, unbelievable. Just dictates play, just sits in that pocket of space as defensive mid, um, and it's just got great attributes. I really enjoy playing with him, and um, I think I've enjoyed having him, basically. But here he is now, just setting up Shelderup, who can't score, sadly. Um, Kefren Turab, if you, if you can't sign him in your save, you will be kicking yourself. I got so lucky with Brighton, who jumped to sign him first. Um, of course, got relegated and had a relegation release clause, or more or less, they, they were willing to sell him for 35 million, which is a bargain. And they bought him for 18. So look, I mean, I know I paid nearly nearly double what you could get him for in the start, but unbelievable. Um, I think he's like 23. There's a great goal from Kudas there. He's like 23, or when the game starts, 21 or 22 possibly, but a powerhouse, an absolute monster, technically gifted, can run can do everything. He's what they call him in baseball, a five-tool player. He literally has everything. He's an absolute animal. Um, Xiao Pedro, do you know what? Not as impressed as I thought. I mean, he scored a good amount of goals, no problem. Um, but not as good as I think last year. Maybe it's just not the right role for him playing that right wing slash striker typically some of the times. I don't know. I don't have an opinion on him. He's been fine. Um, workable. Uh, Kudus surprised me. Uh, Kudus in real life, I think, is overlooked just as much by um, Schroeder as... Um, as I was probably early on in this save, I wasn't planning for life with him being our number one cam or more or less close to that. But he's definitely gone into the role of just being that type of player. I've been absolutely excellent. Really enjoyed him. We did win there and we've wrapped it up and we've obviously nice to leave on a win. But um, obviously just going through the team again. And we've reached Kudas. I don't need to talk too much about Mr. Andrea Sheldarup. A monster, 7.5 million. You're going to sign him in every save if you're not playing a YouTube save <laughs> because he is scary good. It's like scary, scary good. His value is already 92 to 110 million. I'd, if I was playing the save on, I'd sell him next year just to get all that money in. Um, Zatan, bit of hero, a meme signing, if you will, but well worth it and very fun. Um, who else has played a fair amount of appearances? Um, let's have a little look down. Oh, I can't forget about Brian Brobby. The man, um, really slow burner. Last season, didn't do too much for us. Obviously, 10 in uh, 21. I mean, he's slightly better this season, but he scored more goals in all competitions with 27 in all competitions. That's um, 80 in the Cup and 7 in Champions League. He's been lethal this year, much better than last year, um, as much as, obviously, the league form it looks pretty similar. That's mainly because he's been rotated quite a lot as well, which is not a defence to him. Um, but fantastic. I love Brian Brobby. Um, he's someone I'd try and sign. He's still 22, developing all the time. Someone I'd try and sign. He's not worth that much at Ajax as well, so you can get him for a good fee. Daily Blind, model professional, absolutely fantastic. He's a model citizen in-game, and I think it just sums him up. He can play that whole corner, left wing back, left back, centre back, CDM, centre mid if you need him to. Fantastic at everything. Um, obviously, you won't have him too long at Ajax if you are doing an Ajax save, but Try and use as much of him as you can. Um, Findale is a bit of an unsung hero. Um, had a fantastic second season. Was loaned out in the first season because he was lacking football. Um, but yeah, no come back second season. Did really well. And Dicker was a good signing. Didn't play as much as I thought he would, sadly. Um, Edwards is a good one as well. Sadly got injured. Who knows if we had him for that Barca game because he probably would have played. And he was very, very influential off the bench and starting games. Seven assists and six goals in about 15 odd games. Um, unbelievable. Born is another one we really missed this year. Obviously, got a terrible spine injury, so basically missed the whole season, um, which really sucked. Obviously, we did have a few missing players, but nothing to blame. Um, Gluck is another one as well. Oscar Gluck, um, just a player and a half. Obviously, well good. Uh, wonder Kid as well. Just really interesting player to sign. And to be honest, I'm pretty happy with everyone we've covered. There's probably no one else I really need to mention. Uh, Francisco Coyton Sao as well. Big hats off to him, but not that great, sadly. Now, he hasn't developed too much. 
Um, Joral Harto played a fair few games, didn't he? Six games, that's not bad going, is it? Um, but that's basically it. I mean, we'll look at the people we sold, obviously, for big money. Um, Nico Gonzalez, absolute hero. Um, smashing it out um, for Man City already. But just a scarily good player. Um, I think, I, I mean, to be fair, I picked him up for 25 million. I thought that was actually overpaying a bit. But clearly not. Look, in, in a year and a half, we sold him for 64 million, which was rising to 70. So we nearly tripled our money on him so quickly. Um, Bergwijn's one, which is interesting. I don't think I got the... I didn't get the most out of him. And um, he's doing really well at Serie A, actually. He's got 16 in about 42 games, which is good. But I didn't get the best out of him. You might be able to. Uh, Grilich, I didn't rate very at all. I think we got cracking money for him. I didn't really rate him. He only played 22 games for us last year. Lelo was okay. Clarsen's a great player, but got a bit moany, so I had to sell him. <laughs> uh, more about season one, or oh, the end of season one, sorry. Obviously, Kenneth Taylor, legend of the game, but well worth keeping if you can. I couldn't turn, turn down the fee we got for him, sadly, but yeah, that's it, basically. Obviously, we've gone through each of the players. We've done really well. Um, I think it's a great place to leave it right now. Um, but anyway, next save. Let's try and do like a, not like a poll or anything because I'm not going to do one. But let's say like, I don't know, we'll pick a few countries. I'm, I'm open to probably Italy, Germany, France, um, maybe a smaller one like Denmark or something. Maybe not. I don't know. Scandinavia is a preference of mine. I do like the one the kids you can get from there. Norway might be a shout, but I'm open to anything. I'm going to, anyway, look, I'm open to suggestions. I'm not saying I'm going to pick whatever you pick, but I'm going to go away now. Spend a little time, try and reflect on the IX Assembled. I really enjoyed it, and um, I've said many times throughout this, it's been my most successful save so far in terms of viewership, in terms of subscribers, in terms of comments and feedback, and you've all loved it, as opposed to obviously everything that's come before. So thank you so much. I hope you join me for the next season of whatever series it's going to be. I'm open to your input. Let me know what you want to see, and I hope you like what I think of. <laughs> Whenever I think of it, it won't be too long. Give me a week or so, and then we'll start our new save together. More of a journey, a lower league, up to the big leagues. Who can stop us? Let's find out. I've been Frank. Thanks for watching Ajax Assembly for the last time, and um, I'll see you in the next one.